Your life begins as a biological accident, and this is your nest, a sticky 10-foot-long accordion of eggs draped carelessly over a dead submerged branch. You are literally hanging there like a neon sign that says free buffet. Your first memory is a crayfish, an armored tank of the riverbed, climbing your egg ribbon. You watch through the clear membrane as it tears into the structure, its pinchers popping your unhatched siblings like grapes. You can smell the chemical panic in the water. This trauma forces your hand. You hatch prematurely, ripping yourself free from the jelly just to avoid being eaten. You are a tiny, transparent sliver of life, barely the size of a mosquito larvae, and you immediately realize the water is a war zone. To your left, a dragonfly nymph, a hideous alien predator that lives in the mud, shoots its extendable jaw outward. The sibling swimming next to you is snatched in a drag down into the silt. Above you, a small sunfish picks off stragglers with lazy efficiency. Skip forward three weeks. You have learned to hunt ambushing microscopic zooplankton near the surface. You feel a surge of confidence. You are a predator now. To survive, you join a school. From the outside, it looks like a beautiful shimmering cloud of gold and black stripes, moving in perfect unison. But from the inside, it is a prison of anxiety. You are surrounded by thousands of your brothers, but there is no love here. You are all huddled together for one cynical reason. If a predator attacks, you hope it eats the guy next Ooh. to you. The sun begins to set, and the water turns a gloomy gray. You feel a change in pressure before you see anything. It is a pack of walleye. They are tactical. They use their glowing glass-like eyes to see you in the dark while you are blind. They begin to herd your school, pushing you up against the surface of the water, trapping you against the ceiling of your world. The walleye strike with surgical precision. You hear the snap of jaws and the frantic splashing of your family. You are swimming in a blender of teeth and scales. You dive deep into a thick weed bed, pressing yourself into the mud, your gills flaring with terror. Above you, the massacre continues until the walleyes are full. Skip forward six months. You are no longer a helpless fry. You are becoming a spiny rayed fish, a biological cactus designed to make anything that tries to eat you regret it instantly. And you are eager to test your new armor, a juvenile largemouth bass, the same species that haunted your nightmares as a baby, drifts out of the shadows. He sees you not as a threat, but as a mid-morning snack. He lunges, his bucket mouth opening to inhale you. In the past, you would have fled. Today, you hold your ground. In a split-second reflex, you flare. You lock your dorsal spines into a vertical, rigid position. You become a ball of thorns lodged in his throat. The bass panics. He gags, shakes his head violently, and with a convulsive heave, spits you out. You drift away, shaken but unharmed, watching the predator retreat in pain. A surge of adrenaline and pride floods your system. You didn't just survive, you fought back. You believe you have solved the puzzle of survival. You are invincible. Skip forward two years. You are now a jumbo perch. You have reached the impressive length of 10 inches. You are no longer the scavenger picking at plankton. You are a hunter of meat. You patrol the submerged vegetation with the swagger of an apex predator. You spot a school of emerald shiners, flashy, nervous bait fish. They scatter at your approach, and for the first time, you are the one causing the fear. You lock onto a slow straggler. You strike with a burst of speed, your jaws extending to vacuum the prey in. You crush it. You swallow it. The taste of fresh fish confirms your status. You look around your domain. The sunfish move out of your way. The crayfish retreat into their holes when you pass. You have conquered the middle of the food chain. You truly believe you are the king of the lake. But this confidence is a dangerous lie. You are the king of the middle. Your confidence makes you careless. You are so focused on terrorizing a school of minnows that you fail to notice the stillness in the water around you. The small fish haven't fled because of you. They fled because of what is behind you. A shadow detaches itself from the weed line. It is not a bass. It is not a walleye. It is a 40-inch northern pike a mottled green demon that has been the apex predator of these waters since before you were born. It strikes with the force of a car crash. Your world instantly dissolves into pressure and teeth. 
You have no time to think, only to react. You instinctively flare your spines, the same perfect defense that saved you before. You lock them rigid, expecting the predator to gag and release you. The pike does not care. Its mouth is a cavern lined with hundreds of backwards-facing razors. Its draw pressure is immense. Your perfect defense, your row of sharp needles, is crushed like dry twigs. To a monster of this size, your spines are nothing more than a minor texture in its meal. You are being swallowed headfirst into a pit of acid, a footnote in the life of a true god. Just kidding. That almost happened. At the last microsecond, the pike's strike angle was off by an inch. Its teeth raked down your flank, shredding your scales and leaving deep, bleeding gashes. But it missed the kill shot. You rocket into a crevice between two large boulders, pressing yourself so deep into the dark that your gills scrape the stone. You stay there for two days, bleeding and trembling. Your survival wasn't skill, it was a rounding error in the pike's calculations. Skip forward to winter. You are an old, scarred veteran. You have survived the pike, the bass, the walleye, and the birds. You have won the game of survival. The lake freezes over, sealing your world under a thick lid of ice and snow. A deep, cold peace settles over the water. You descend to the deep basin, huddling with a school of other survivors in the mud. Your metabolism slows to a crawl. You are lethargic, safe in the gloom. The monsters are sleeping. You have finally found peace. Then, a new light appears. A tiny, flashing piece of metal, a gold jigging spoon, dances in the darkness above you. It vibrates and flashes with an unnatural rhythm. You're not hungry, but you are curious. It's an annoyance in your quiet world. You swim up to inspect it, maybe to nudge it away from your face. You nip at it. The hook sets. There is no epic run, no line-stripping battle. The water is too cold, and your body is too stiff. It is a confusing, relentless vertical pull, dragging you up, away from the safety of the mud, through the crushing pressure changes. You are hauled through a small, circular hole in the ice, into a world of blinding white light and agonizing, freezing air that burns your gills. A giant face looks down on you. It is a human fisherman. He doesn't admire your battle scars. He doesn't respect your years of survival against the odds. He smiles, looks at your thick sides, and says, Perfect. Just what I needed for the fish fry. You are tossed onto the ice, gasping, next to a dozen of your brothers. Your entire, long, brutal life, the terror of the egg ribbon, the panic of the school, the pain of growing spines, the scars from the pike, all of that struggle was for this, to become a crispy, golden-fried filet on a paper plate 